Hello and uh, welcome to AWS X-Ray Distributed Tracing with HA Proxy Enterprise. My name is Daniel Corbett and I'm the Director of Product at HA Proxy Technologies. HA Proxy Technologies is the company behind the open source software, HA Proxy, open source software load balancer. Um, HA Proxy is known uh, for its high performance, low resource usage, um, and touts an extremely flexible um, yet powerful configuration that uh, gives you the building blocks to create as simple or as advanced of a load balancing configuration that is required within your infrastructure. Um, it is built to run at any scale and in any environment and can be placed um, at the edge of your network as a standard reverse proxy load balancer or as an API gateway um, or optionally as a sidecar proxy within a service mesh. Um, it has a very mature code base uh, with version 1.0 being initially released in 2001 and it also has a very active mailing list and a large uh, community of contributors. So let's give a little bit of information on observability uh, before we dive in. So what is observability? Uh, according to Wikipedia, observability is a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. Willie Toro, the author of HA Proxy, says that observability helps you to detect what is not working and why. So when discussing observability, our inputs would be our whole infrastructure and our outputs would typically be logs and statistics or, or metrics. Three of the major pieces involved uh, in observability would be uh, logging, metrics, and tracing. So what role can the load balancer play in observability? Well, the load balancer um, is a great obs observation point. Uh, it's typically centrally located um, and found at the edge of the network. Um, but in distributed systems, we would have one load balancer per level um, of your application. Uh, frequently, the load balancing decisions can even depend um, on various metrics that are available. So let's discuss the logging and metrics a bit. Um, HA Proxy has been known to provide invaluable logging and metrics in its default uh, logs. Some of the basic log info that you'll find within the default HTTP request log would be uh, the client IP address, the front end that was requested, the back end and the destination server that it was sent to, uh, the request method and the request URI, uh, the response status code, as well as the uh, uh, bytes that were transferred. In this particular example, we could see that the front end was FE main and the back end was BE scorekeep and the server that it was processed to was server one. Uh, we can see that the request method was a post and it was sent to an API endpoint. Um, and the response status code was 200 with 814 bytes uh, returned. So now that we have some of the basic log outputs covered, let's discuss some of the advanced logs a bit. Um, HA proxy default logs also contain various timing information. Uh, this allows us to track down uh, where a slowness happened and allows us to pinpoint a possible issue. The default timing data you'll find within the HA proxy logs are how long HA proxy took waiting for the client to send the full request. This is the time elapsed between the first bytes received and the moment HA proxy received the empty line marking the end of the HTTP headers. How long the request spent waiting in queues for a connection slot. This accounts for the backend queue as well as the server queues. Um, the total time it took HA proxy to establish the connect, uh, TCP connection to the server. This is essentially the elapsed time between the moment the proxy uh, sent the connection request and the moment it was acknowledged by the server. Um, and we'll also see how long it took in total uh, for the server to send the re response. This will be the time elapsed between the moment the TCP connection was established to the server and the moment the server sent its complete resp response headers. And finally, uh, we'll see the total active time for that HTTP request between the moment HA proxy received the first byte of the request header and the emission of the last byte of the response body. Another important set of data uh, that is found within the default logs, uh, request logs is a two letter code uh, that is the session state at this connection. Uh, the HTTP request logs provide four characters with the last two characters uh, indicating whether a cookie was provided by the client and whether the cookie uh, operations were performed on the cookie by the server. We won't be covering the cookie fields uh, in today's presentation. So uh, back to the first two characters. Uh, the first character will give us some information on the first event which caused the session to terminate. Uh, the second character will give us the session state uh, when it was closed. 
This helps us to determine which side caused the end of the session to happen, as well as the reason for the disconnect, um, and whether it was closed normally or not. Uh, in the example here, we can see that the first letter, capital C, indicates the TCP session was unexpectedly aborted by the client, and the capital R indicates that HAProxy was waiting for a complete and valid request from the client. This is equivalent to a client that will begin loading a page and then either cancels the page load or navigates away to another site. Um, HAProxy also provides various counters within its request logs, which will tell us how many con con concurrent connections were being handled within the process when the session was logged. Uh, using, this table, we're using this data, we're able to see how many active connections uh, there were, how many of them were on the front end in question, how many were on the back end, and how many were on the destination server, and, and also how many retries were experienced by the session when trying to connect to the back end server. So, AWS X-Ray is a tool to help analyze and debug uh, production distributed applications. Some of its benefits are it allows you to review request behavior. Um, it traces users' requests as they travel through your entire application. With AWS X-Ray, you can gather insights into how uh, your application is performing and discover root causes. Um, AWS X-Ray also helps you identify performance bottlenecks, which will allow you to improve uh, the overall performance of your application. And finally, it works for both simple and complex applications and allows you to analyze a variety of applications. So before we uh, get into everything, I'd like to go over some AWS X-Ray specific definitions uh, so that we're all on the same page. Um, a segment provides the resource's name, the details about the request, and details about the work being done. Um, and a segment can break down the data about the work done in the sub-segments. Sub-segments sub provide more granular timing information and details about downstream calls uh, that your application made to fulfill the original request. And a trace ID is a unique ID which tracks the path of a request uh, through your application. Annotations are simple key value pairs that are indexed um, for use with filter expressions or search searching on the data in general. Um, and then metadata are similar to annotations. They're also key value pairs, um, but they can contain values of any type, including objects and lists, but they cannot be searched on or indexed. So um, a segment. A segment at a minimum requires uh, a name, a trace ID, a segment ID, and a start and an end time. So one of our customers came to us and they asked us to develop a solution uh, which would allow them to integrate uh, their HA proxy enterprise install with AWS X-Ray. They wanted to use some of the observability data that's available within HA proxy um, and make it um, available within X-Ray. We're always open to satisfying our customer needs, so we went ahead and developed the following solution. This is a sample service map which shows HA proxy sitting at the edge of the network in front of um, Amazon sample application uh, for X-Ray, which is called Scorekeep. Uh, you can see that uh, HAProxy is at the front of the map in the green. Uh, it's uh, FE main, and the client is uh, before that. So to generate the trace ID that will be used in this, uh, we use something similar to the following. Uh, I want you to note that some of this can be simplified into a, sim a single line, but it's been split up for readability purposes. Um, we use the convert functions that are found within HAProxy, specifically rand, hex, and bytes, um, to create the random trace ID. Uh, we then use HAProxy's unique ID format parameter to form the trace ID and prepend the original request in Unix uh, epoch time and eight hexadecimal digits. Uh, next, we create a segment ID similar to the trace ID, and this will be used um, as the parent ID, which will allow sub-segments to associate themselves with it. Finally, we pass the X Amazon trace ID HTTP header to the application server. So to bring everything together, uh, we also use our syslog uh, in the process. And specifically, we use the OMProg module within our, our syslog, which will allow us to create our own application, which our syslog will pipe data to. Uh, this allows us to ensure that the request is completed and gives us access to the full timing data uh, from the request. It also ensures that there are no delays or blocking is caused to the request while X-Ray is processing um, this data. data. Uh, we can also do sampling um, of the data. We can, only, we can decide to send only certain logs at a random sample to X-Ray. We could do this using uh, either the HA proxy configuration directly, or optionally, we can also do this within the AWS X-Ray portal. So here's a diagram of how this would look. 
Uh, you have your client uh, come, come in, it flows through HA proxy, uh, which goes onto the backend application server, and which the application server would call its application specific dependencies. In this example, it'll be DynamoDB and, and SNS. And then once the request has been completed, HA proxy will uh, send the request log to our syslog, which will then pipe uh, to our OM prog application. Um, the OM prog, prog application will parse out the data from the request log, all the timing data that I discussed, as well as the session termination states, and then send that over to the local X-ray daemon. So I'll go ahead and uh, go through uh, the demo real quick. So in this demo, uh, we're using the Scorekeep application, which is a sample application provided by Amazon for X-ray. I've also introduced latencies on both the client and the HA proxy server side on purpose uh, to simulate uh, a real world slowness or, or issue to, to debug. So we're going to go through and just play through a quick tic-tac-toe game um, of this application. So once, once we're done playing the tic-tac-toe game, we're going to go ahead and log into AWS X-Ray to uh, view the data uh, that's available. Uh, when we log in, we can see um, the request method of the various requests, the uh, response code, as well as the response time. We can also sort by the response time to see which request took the longest. If we go ahead and click on um, one of the requests that took the longest and drill down into that, we'll be able to see a waterfall view that shows us FE main, which is our front end. And we can see right there that the total request time was 316 milliseconds, uh, with the client request time being 109 milliseconds. Um, and the time the connection was queued was for 80 milliseconds. Um, there was zero milliseconds on the server connect time, and then 120 milliseconds for the server to send its response. If we drill into um, the front end FE main, we'll see some additional data that was sent. One, we could see the segment ID, as well as the front end name as FE main, the start and the end times, as well as if any errors were generated. And then we could see various information about the request, the request URI, the request method, the client user agent, the client IP, the response uh, status code that was returned, as well as the content length. So if we head over to the annotations tab, we'll be able to see the termination code that was returned. In this case, the termination code was dash dash. That means that uh, the client, uh, the connection was closed successfully on both sides, the client and the server side. Um, and if we head over to the metadata tab, we could see some additional information. One, we could see a breakdown of what this termination code meant, where the first event um, that caused the session to terminate was a normal session completion. Uh, both the client and the server closed with nothing left in the buffers. Um, and then we could see that the session state at this connection was, uh, again, a normal session completion after data transfer. Uh, we could also see some of the queued data. Uh, that was involved, we can see that the backend processed one connection in the queue prior to getting to this uh, specific connection, and the server had nothing in the queue. Um, if we move on, uh, we can see that while the request was processing, there were two connections uh, that were active within the HA proxy process. Two of them were on the, the front end that handled this request. One of them was on uh, the back end, and then one of them was on the server, and there was uh, zero retries involved. So that'll kind of give you an idea of what load your uh, HA proxy instance is over at, under at the time. Uh, so if we go ahead and we're going to search on the termination code that I mentioned before, and we're going to look for a termination code that is not equal to dash dash. That means it was not successful. Um, and we immediately see the response codes that popped up are 503, uh, indicating some kind of error. So if we, we drill down into this request, we'll be able to see some, some further data about what, what was behind that uh, particular error. So here we could see that the time the request was queued was 41 milliseconds, and the server response time was negative one. Negative one indicates that the connection was not passed to the server. If we go into the annotations, we'll uh, see that the termination code was lowercase s, capital Q. That indicates uh, the lowercase s is the server side timeout uh, expired while waiting for the server to send or receive data. And the capital Q indicates that the proxy was waiting in the queue for a connection slot. So essentially, th th this was a, a timeout while waiting um, in the queue. So normally, you have to, you'll have these codes available in the logs but you won't really know what they mean. You'll have to look them up in the manual. So using this integration, you'll have quick access to know, uh, to track down any issues. So if we drill into another request, um, we could see, again, this was 166 milliseconds. We uh, 
look at the annotations, we can see the termination code was lowercase c, capital, lowercase s, capital C. And again, we can see it was the lowercase s is a server side timeout while waiting for the server to send or receive data. But this time, it was the proxy was waiting for a connection to establish to the server. For those of you familiar with the HA proxy configuration, this would essentially be a timeout connect was reached. Um, and then if we go drill into the service map, this is the screenshot that I showed uh, initially. We'll see that HA proxy is at the, the front edge facing of the client. Um, HA proxy sends the request onto the scorekeep application, which then processes it to its uh, the application specific dependencies, uh, DynamoDB, as well as SNS. Um, and if we click on any of these, we'll be able to see um, uh, the, the response distribution, uh, the latency graphs, um, and, and, and also see if there were any faults detected. Um, so that, that concludes uh, the, the demo. Um, that I that I have for right now. Um. We probably have a few minutes for questions. If anybody has any, I'd be happy to give you the microphone. Just raise your hand. And and feel free to um, you know if yeah. So if we're using HA proxy here, do we have to bring that up in an instance, or how are we bringing it up in Amazon? Yeah, HA proxy would, whatever uh, load balancer you're using at the moment, uh, HA proxy would probably replace that or be an additional layer within that. You know, um, if you're using NLB, for example, you can have NLB and then multiple HA proxy enterprise instances behind that. Yeah. And feel free to stop by. I'll give you the information on our booth, and we can discuss it more if you like. Anybody else? Questions? Going once, going twice. All right. Oh, we got one right here. So I couldn't tell what part uh, was uh, AWS X-Ray native versus what is the value add of uh, having HA proxy, right? Is there a clear demark of uh, what is available with HA proxy? The value? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so a, a lot of times when you're dealing with uh, some proxy solutions, um, some of the load balancers that are available, they don't give you the information on wh where a timeout occurred. You know, a, a lot of times we've all been there where you have your, your development team is fighting with your network engineering team and they're wondering, oh, this is slow. No, it's the network, it's the application. They're going back and forth. Well, using the data within HA proxy, the request data, you'll be able to see whether the slowness was on the client side, whether the slowness was on the back end server side, um, or, or somewhere in between. Uh, uh, most load balancer solutions that you use, they don't provide this kind of observability or this timing data. So when there's a timeout or a problem, you're kind of just lost trying to figure out where the timeout occurred. So when, when you add this, uh, this integration in, in place, you'll be able to quickly see, oh, well, the timeout happened on the client side. And then when you look further in the client, you may find they're on a mobile network or, or something like that. Uh, you know. Any other questions? Hey, do you also have like those kind of uh, integrations with CloudWatch metrics, for example, the timeout information? We, I, I don't think we do. Um, we, we've been working on it because we, we are available in the marketplace, um, and it's something we've talked about. I'll have to ask internally, and if, and if you come by the booth, I'll, I'll discuss further with you. But sure. I, I don't think that it will be too difficult for us to add something like this. Much um, easier than the actual yeah. integration. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, I just think we're good. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, if you'd like to le learn more about HA Proxy and AWS X-Ray, stop by our booth. It's 1114. Um, and also check out our blog at blog.haproxy.com to learn more about how HA Proxy can help to provide increased observability into your environment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel.